Rishi Sunak's body undergoes a remarkable transformation every week from Sunday to Tuesday. This biohacking prime minister goes on a journey of metabolic shifts as he goes on a no-food challenge, backed by science. What's really going on inside his body and brain during his 36-hour fasts? If you've never gone without food for a whole day, your body has probably never seen these benefits before. And could these health benefits make you a better prime minister? What risks is he taking? Let's find out. Soon-to-be former UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak doesn't eat from 5pm on a Sunday until 5am on a Tuesday, fasting for about 36 hours each week. What's the longest you've gone without food? Rishi's fast is longer than the usual forms of intermittent fasting you've probably heard of, like 5-2 or 16-hour fasts. This fasting challenge triggers a series of restorative metabolic changes, each stage offering unique benefits and insights into human health and endurance. Let's explore stage by stage what happens in the body during a 36-hour fast and how it might help in the demanding role of running a country. His journey begins. In the first few hours, Rishi's body is still digesting his last meal, and his insulin levels will be elevated, signaling to absorb and store nutrients and energy. Glucose from his meal is used as the primary energy source, with excess glucose being stored as glycogen, and fatty acids in his adipose tissue in the form of triglycerides. His insulin levels start to decrease, shifting his body to a catabolic mode, preparing to break down glycogen and other energy stores. His body is still reliant on glucose, topping itself up by breaking down glycogen in the liver and muscles. Rishi is very busy attempting to run a country, and he claims he loves using his peloton bike. So let's say he burns through his glycogen in 12 hours before the onset of the next critical metabolic shift. But until then, things are pretty normal. He probably feels hunger pangs around his usual meal times, but he chooses to ignore them, and this one small thing ties into the biggest fasting benefit of all. Stick to the end to learn more on that. But first, as he goes deeper into the fasting state, this is where the true magic begins. The dwindling of glycogen stores triggers the onset of a new change in Rishi Sunak, as his body begins to seek alternative energy sources. The body starts to increase the breakdown of fat into fatty acids, which are then converted into ketone bodies in the liver. This process, termed ketogenesis, marks the body's entry into a state of ketosis, a natural metabolic response to prolonged fasting. Ketogenesis kicks into high gear by the time Rishi is 24 hours into his fast. Ketones become the primary energy source, especially for the brain, which can't use fatty acids directly. Have you ever heard that the brain requires glucose for fuel? This is actually somewhat of a myth, and growing evidence suggests that the optimal fuel might be ketones, particularly for preventing cognitive decline. Fascinatingly, this metabolic switch doesn't just fuel the body, it regenerates it. Ketones aren't just a fuel used during periods of fasting. They're potent signaling molecules with major impacts on health and aging. What benefits might Rishi start to see at this stage of the fast? And what happens when he goes even deeper into the fast after this stage? Fasting and ketones are linked to increased levels of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which supports learning and protects against neurodegenerative diseases, as well as a range of other neurotrophic factors and neuroprotective processes. This includes synaptogenesis, the formation of new synapses in the brain, critical for long-term memory and brain plasticity. Altogether, fasting could enhance Sunak's cognitive abilities, crucial for decision-making and strategizing how to lose an election. The switch to ketogenesis enhances the body's defenses against oxidative and metabolic stress. It's not just about surviving without food, it's about initiating processes that repair or remove damaged molecules, improve glucose regulation, increase stress resistance, and suppress inflammation. During prolonged fasting, insulin levels continue to drop, and the body becomes more sensitive to it. Think of how the more you drink alcohol, the harder it is to get drunk. With insulin, the more your levels are high or spiked, the more resistant you are to it. But just like you might become a lightweight after dry January, fasting has been linked to improved insulin sensitivity. This helps reverse conditions like obesity and type 2 diabetes. This is probably a key benefit for Rishi, given that people from a South Asian background can be up to six times more likely to have type 2 diabetes, and three times more likely to develop cardiovascular disease. Fasting's weight loss isn't solely due to reduced calorie intake. It's easier to lose fat when you're keeping your body in a hormonal fat-burning mode instead of relying on sugars. A bit like how you'll only go into your freezer once your fridge is empty. Metabolic switching and hormonal changes play a key role. This switch to fat-burning mode and ketone production can be seen as a reset for the body's energy processing system, offering benefits for disease prevention beyond simple weight management. 
But what about fasting beyond 24 hours? By continuing to fast, Rishi goes even deeper into the fasting state, beyond the initial metabolic shifts and benefits. How does the body adapt, and how can we use this for better health? This phase is crucial for understanding the profound effects of prolonged fasting and ketosis, benefits that you won't see if you're only doing shorter, intermittent fasts and still eating every day, benefits you might never experience if you've never gone a day without food. Let's find out more. The shift away from glucose as a primary energy source not only serves to conserve muscle mass, but also triggers a range of cellular benefits. One of the most significant changes, autophagy, is the body's way of spring cleaning cleaning out damaged cells, recycling the parts, and regenerating newer, healthier cells. This process is crucial for cellular health and longevity, and its activation during fasting has been a topic of extensive research. Fasting-induced autophagy has been shown to boost normal cell function, leading to regeneration and improvements in the health of various organs and tissues, including the brain and nervous system, muscles, liver, kidney, heart, and pancreas. Prolonged fasting stimulates the regeneration of various cell types. There are promising results to suggest that prolonged fasting promotes the regeneration of stem cells and boosting immune cells, which could reverse immunosuppression due to chemotherapy or aging. In this way, Rishi's longer fasts could actually maintain his immune system and contribute to improved disease resistance as he ages. The deep fasting state can have a positive impact on inflammation levels. Chronic inflammation is linked to a host of health issues, including heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. By reducing inflammation, fasting can lower the risk of these chronic diseases. By inducing autophagy and fat loss, inflammation is further reduced, as worn-out cells, obesity, and excess fat are tightly linked to numerous health problems and even aging. Rishi's gained a lot in his fasting challenge so far, and many cardiovascular benefits. But what about when he eats again? Are these benefits maintained? Upon reintroducing food, the body exits the fasting state, and its metabolic processes adjust back to normal. However, this transition can be as significant as the fasting period itself. What are the health benefits and risks we see at this stage? And what's the biggest benefit of all, if you're a biohacking prime minister? Initially, there's a surge in insulin in response to food, which helps in the utilization and storage of nutrients. This phase is critical, as the body is newly sensitive to insulin after a period of fasting. His body replenishes its glycogen stores in the liver and muscles, and he shifts away from ketosis back to using glucose as the primary energy source. Many fasting benefits are actually triggered during the refeeding process, such as cellular and tissue regeneration, or the creation of new mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. But one of the biggest benefits might surprise you. How hungry do you think you'd be after 36 hours? Fasting changes your perception of food and appetite, and people often report that their first meal after a long fast comes with a heightened sense of taste and satisfaction, restoring a healthier relationship with food. What's more, fasting and ketones actually reduce your appetite due to hormonal changes with ghrelin, the hunger hormone, and leptin, the satiety hormone. So you don't actually get exponentially more hungry the longer you go without food. Hunger comes in waves, driven by hormones. You may initially feel more hungry, but evidence shows that ignoring hunger pangs makes them weaker over time the longer you fast. By the time Rishi Sunak eats again, he probably has a reduced appetite, and it's common to feel fuller after much less food than usual. Are these benefits sustained though? Fasting offers many short-term health benefits to kickstart better health, but how sustainable these are over the longer term isn't totally clear yet. But so far, it seems like a sustained, consistent approach to fasting would be required to reap the rewards over the longer term. This means finding a way to live with a fasting style that works for you, so you can continue to see all of these metabolic benefits rather than just doing a fast once and thinking you've done the job. But what about the risks? Do you think you get hangry? Maybe you're just in withdrawal. Some people experience low mood, tiredness, irritability, or even headaches when they skip meals. Maybe this is why Rishi is so irritable. However, these symptoms have been found to often subside over time as you stick with fasting. You've probably spent your whole life surrounded by abundant food, and breaking that habit, like changing any habit, is harder for some people than others. If you're prone to binge purge disordered eating, this fasting style might be a risky approach for you, as fasting could trigger binge eating episodes. Rishi Sunak himself says that his fasts allow him to gorge on sugar and Mexican coke, the drink, not the drug, probably, so maybe he shouldn't be your role model. Fasting is often a way to kickstart a healthier relationship with food, so find something that works for you. What about losing muscle? Losing lean mass is a worry for many people when they think about fasting, and studies show that this can happen. However, many people often dial back the exercise they do when they fast, 
and it's this combination of fasting and a sedentary lifestyle that triggers loss of lean mass. Just think about all the lean mass that is lost after a stint of bed rest and lower quality food in the hospital. Exercise signals to your body to hold on to muscle. If you continue to exercise while fasting, weightlifting in particular, even if it's light exercise, then studies demonstrate that you can maintain your muscle mass while still living off your fat. In fact, fasting has been shown to increase the secretion of human growth hormone, maintaining muscle growth and repair. This can be beneficial for physical endurance and recovery, important for a high-stress job and busy lifestyle leaving a country. The risks are manageable for most people and definitely worth it for all the metabolic benefits, but I haven't mentioned one of the biggest benefits yet, and it's not money. If Rishi wasn't a banker married to a billionaire, I'd be talking about how much money he probably saves on food each week. Rishi Sunak's weekly 36-hour fasting journey can show us that the practice of fasting, especially prolonged fasting, is a complex process with significant metabolic and cellular effects on the body, such as ketogenesis and autophagy. Something I've not mentioned yet, though, is the willpower, mental clarity, focus, and productivity that people often observe when they take up longer fasts. And this may be a big reason why Rishi continues to fast for 36 hours each week while working a demanding job as Prime Minister. One thing you'll notice when you take up fasting is not only how much focus you can have, but how much time you free up by not having to think about food, from shopping to cooking to eating and washing up. Plus, fasting and ketosis has been shown to reset the body's circadian rhythm, contributing to improved sleep and overall well-being. You're probably wondering about how you might use fasting to optimize your health, lose weight or slow the aging process. If so, then learn more by watching this video next.